Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for this webinar. My name is Katie Heil. I'm the Director of Business Development here at Double Radius. And today we're joined by our friends at Sicklu um, to talk about some new products that are, they're going to introduce with us today that are going to be coming on the market in the next couple months um, throughout the, the rest of the year. Um, just as a quick reminder, if there's any questions during the webinar, please just ask them in the, the Q&A box and we will, we will answer them as the presentation goes, um, goes on and then we'll reserve like 10 minutes at the end to go through any additional questions we haven't answered. Um, and to begin, I'm just, I'm going to hand it off to Alex and Shimon and have them introduce themselves from Ciclu um, and then we can start the presentation. So Alex, um, I'll let you take it from here and introduce yourself. Sure, Katie, thank you. And thank you everyone for getting on the call uh, today. Uh, my name is Alex Dorden. I'm the VP and GM of Ciclu Americas. I'm based out of uh, California and nice to be here today. And also on the call is uh, Shimon. Shimon, you're there. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, good morning, everybody. I'm Shimon Hochbaum, AVP Products Management. I'm very happy to be able to let you know what we plan to do in the coming months with our products. Back to you, back to you, I guess, uh, Alex, uh, with the agenda. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Shimon. So I just kind of want to cover what we're going to be uh, going through today with, with, with everyone. We're going to give you just a quick intro on Ciclu in case some of you are not familiar with, with Ciclu. Um, also going to look at just a quick overview of the Ciclu multiple teragraph uh, product line. Then we're going to introduce a couple of new products uh, that we're about to launch. Um, the uh, the multi-hole TG N265 and also the MPL T260. Um, then we're going to uh, also... Uh, Give you a high level overview of the tg roadmap uh, like a sneak peek of what's coming um, and then we're also going to look at the the next generation eban 70 80 gigahertz radio so that some of you uh, are very familiar with um, and then we're going to um, look at some application case studies for, for tg where it's been deployed very successfully and at the end as katie mentioned we're going to have a, a short q a session I think uh, Katie and I are going to do, uh, okay, yeah, thanks. Uh, the next one, so Ciclu, a quick introduction for those who, who are not familiar with with the company. We're uh, uh, an Israeli-based uh, company, that's so all the engineering is done. Also, most of the manufacturing is done there as well. Um, you know, we've got a, a number of, of uh, patents to our name. Um, also, uh, a number of smart cities. Uh, you can see kind of some of the some of them on there as well. Um, in terms of uh, products with leaders in millimeter wave, uh, the 60, 70, 80 gigahertz spectrum, we're actually um, uh, 71% uh, share of uh, EBAN installations in, in the US, kind of gives you an idea, being around since 2008 um, and with a global presence. Great, thanks Alex. I think we're gonna, I'm gonna launch a poll. Um, so just to kind of get an idea of how many people have deployed Ciclu um, before that are on this call. So if you've deployed Ciclu, the Ciclu, any of the Ciclu solutions in the past, um, select yes or no. And we'll leave this open for about 30 seconds. So it looks like about two thirds, Alex, um, have deployed Ciclu in the past um, from the audience. So, excellent, good to know. Thanks, Katie. Good, good amount. So I guess it tells us that we're in a good crowd, uh, but you know, maybe still uh, before we continue, as you mentioned, Alex, a brief overview of uh, what the multi OLTG portfolio is all about. Uh, it's today the largest uh, portfolio, Teragraph certified portfolio uh, in the number of uh, options of network elements, be it on the, the node side or on the terminal unit side, uh, where we offer, uh, as of today, with the launch of the new products, uh, solutions which are both 360 degrees or 90 degrees, two different products, uh, depending on the use case and the application, and we'll show in a moment uh, why there are uh, why, the, why there is a need for the two types of solution, uh, and also quite a choice of uh, terminal units available for the edge, uh, which will allow covering the short distances, the medium, and the long distances, 
as well as uh, high-end uh, type of applications where multiport and high speeds are needed or the very efficient single family home type deployment where it's all about uh, cost and effectiveness and easy, easiness of deployment and all these call for different products and we have them in uh, the portfolio. Uh, something which is also worth uh, remembering and like uh, other Teragraph certified solutions, there is not necessarily a requirement for a network controller. Uh, the, net, the network uh, elements are very easy to connect. Uh, most of the time, a single command on the GUI uh, is all what is required to set up a link. Uh, and if something more complex is required, like activating some VLANs or some provider bridge configuration, uh, because it's all a native layer two uh, solution, uh, it's also very easy to implement. How does a, a typical uh, multi OTG solution look like? I'm trying to uh, bring in here a, a highlighter to, so we always extend fiber, that's uh, the name of the game. Uh, we like fiber, but we all know that fiber doesn't reach everywhere, and that is where millimeter wave solutions like multi OTG come into uh, extending the uh, availability, the, uh, the capacity of the fiber across uh, any kind of service area. Uh, we always start with a node where we connect uh, the fiber to, and then we start cascading along the service area with a number of these nodes uh, to be the backbone of the service area. And from each node, we can extend with terminal units to deliver the services to single family homes, to high rises, to a business type structure, or anything we like. Uh, it's just a very simple deployment because we deploy the, the backbone and the service infrastructure. Uh, at the same time, it is very extensible. Uh, we can do services with different types of nodes as we talked before, uh, sorry, different types of terminal units as we talked a moment ago, uh, but also with the nodes which can be seated on top of, for example, a very important customer here, provide the uh, uh, resiliency with east-west type of solutions uh, ready to go and the number of service ports on the bottom of the node uh, to cover different types of scenario, be it a, a fiber drop or a 10 gigabit uh, copper port or even a PoE powered solution for uh, additional boxes which uh, would be powered from the same location. Uh, all this infrastructure is uh, ready to be active under a cloud application which we are going to be talking about in a few minutes. But as you know, the multi OTG solution is not new. It has been deployed so far with any kind of network controller, and people will be able to continue to do so if uh, they don't need the Rondo subsystem. A lot of uh, the audience, I understand, has heard already about CCLU and possibly about multi OTG. For those who did not hear, but have maybe heard about multi OTG, uh, so about Teragraph uh, for some time now. Uh, Teragraph is uh, the brainchild of uh, a Meta, formerly Facebook. Uh, you know, they came up with a kind of a you know, design uh, book, if you want, including a lot of uh, uh, silicon and software uh, and architecture in general to extend the fiber capacity across the service area. Uh, that's what the Teragraph ecosystem is all about. Uh, a number of uh, design options are available. And we looked at uh, the end result of Teragraph. Uh, we liked some things, but we didn't like a lot of it. And uh, we can see some of the changes that we've done. For example, we operate uh, natively as layer two. So there is no need to run any kind of uh, IPv6 or assign IP addresses at all in many cases are not required in our solution, so that's very easy to deploy. Uh, in terms of a node unit, or sometimes called the uh, distribution nodes, uh, mo most everybody was uh, going for one option or, not, or another. Uh, we realized that in order to address uh, all the many different service cases, uh, we needed more than one solution, and that's we are, what we are, we are doing, sorry. Uh, in terms of out of box, uh, the traditional Teragraph solution mandates some kind of network controller. 
uh, there's no there's just no way around it uh, we know that some uh, or some of the audience does not always like the notion of being dependent on a central entity uh, to set up a network or to maintain and operate it uh, and that's why we started rolling out our uh, Teragraph certified solution without any kind of uh, central controller and we will continue to do so and even when we add our network controller and we'll talk about that in a moment it's there just to provision the network but it's not there to take care of resiliency so that in case uh, some problems will occur the network is self-contained will know how to react to uh, faults in the network uh, even if uh, the network controller is not available at that point in time just maybe a connectivity failure for example uh, and then some other aspects which are maybe not tied to the way uh, Teragraph design was done but the way at Cyclo uh, how we operate uh, we have had the network design tool available for some time that uh, smart all uh, windy uh, which is available to all of the audience here if you want to and all of your all of the members of your organization absolutely no limit uh, whereas uh, Meta restricted the, the use of their network planning tool uh, to the vendor of Teragraph certified solutions and some selected partners, so maybe the high-level distributors but not the end users, uh, which is uh, a pain because everybody wants to understand what is the capability of Teragraph uh, directly uh, on their own uh, without uh, intermediaries. They want to investigate uh, how to best deploy and how to optimize the solution for their need. And that is what Windy allows everybody to do, which is not available uh, from other vendors. And at Cyclo, uh, Alex already mentioned that we have a, a range of uh, 70, 80 solutions. So we can, uh, in cases or in places, sorry, where the fiber does not reach the service area all the way, uh, we have a, a number of solutions which allow extending uh, 10 gigabit and soon 20 gigabit uh, capacity. Uh, from wherever the fiber ends to wherever the service area is located. So making it uh, a very self-contained uh, solution, all integrated, ready to go, and very uh, and no risk for uh, the organization deploying our solutions. And just to add to that, Shimon, just in layman's terms, we basically take in Teragraph and made it yes, yeah, much simpler, right? Um, you know, we, we take the basic architecture, Made it very easy to use, very easy to deploy, because we think that that's very important to to our partners. You know, they want they want a product which is which is simple. So we've kind of simplified it. I'd say probably the Cyclo Teragraph solution uh, is is probably uh, certainly we would uh, claim the the, the easiest uh, and simplest to both deploy and manage out of all the different uh, Teragraph solutions available today. Back to you, Shimon. Thank you. So in terms of uh, making it easy, actually, you know, the, the 360 degrees, the uh, N366 is probably the easiest uh, to, because you put it anywhere you can at the top of a pole or at the middle of a pole and you have 360 degree coverage all the time, uh, which in terms of flexibility of designing a network is very important uh, because it means that basically you just put it anywhere you can and you get 360 degrees coverage. Uh, you can serve up to 60 customers from that location. In terms of channel planning, you can activate any of the four sectors uh, anywhere you want. Uh, you have a choice of ports, which are uh, 10 gigabit corporate, 10 gigabit uh, fiber, or one gigabit, you have payway out. So a lot of flexibility into how to connect to this node, which kind of services you can offer from this node, and even the ability to power additional equipment if you want to. To make it uh, very simple uh, to deploy the, the single site uh, and you know we offer today a capacity which is in the range of 3.8 gigabit per sector or in excess of 15 gigabit per node but that's not uh, the end uh, we are planning to enable channel bonding feature uh, next year uh, which will allow basically offering services at not just one gigabit but even 2.5 gigabit so on par with uh, what uh, FTTH does today, whether it's based on uh, g -Pawn or Toxis, uh, same kind of speeds which uh, these infrastructures are planning to deliver can be delivered also over uh, the multi OLTG solution. I'm not going to cover all of our products, just you know some of the 
a key one. So we talk about the Node 366. Uh, here we have uh, at the, really the other end of the spectrum of all of our products, the multi OTG T260, which is really the, the, pre, the preferred product for the single family home uh, application. It's very small box, 20 by, uh, sorry, here we are, should be talking in inches. So less than seven and a half inches by 4.3. So it's very small, very easy to deploy, even your window, which some of our customers, which are not allowed to mount uh, the terminal unit on the roof uh, because of regulations, because of uh, you know, all kinds of uh, uh, the owner of the roof doesn't want them to mount anything there. So they just put it on the side of a window and run a single cable for uh, data up to one gigabit and power to this unit. Uh, it's a 13 watt power, so many switches can power the T260 uh, over the data cable. And if they cannot, uh, in the box of the T260, there is a very simple brick uh, to run the data cable through and power the T260 in that way. Uh, we try to make this uh, very simple for the installer. So in the box of the T260, uh, we get the T260, we get uh, the mounting kit that you can see here from the side. Uh, we get the two metallic bands to attach the T260 to whatever you want. But if you want to do a wall mount, uh, the mounting the bracket is already pre-drilled with two holes. And the drill pattern is printed on the quick start guide, which is included in the box as well. So very easy to do a, a pole or a wall mount installation. Uh, the PO injector is included. The all weather shell, which is there at the bottom to protect cable entry, is also included. The grounding cable, basically, it's a, it's a kit which is all ready to go in the box. So, very simple uh, for the installer. They don't need to worry, they have it all ready to do. And now we are going to start looking at some uh, newer things that we are doing. So uh, one product uh, which uh, you may have seen already the uh, announcement in your uh, inboxes today, but very soon otherwise, is the uh, Multi-OLTG N265. So we saw a moment ago our solution for 360 degrees. It's been a, a very good solution, uh, but we realized while customers were deploying it, uh, but even though it's very compact and very efficient and very simple to deploy for 360 degrees, there are cases where it's not a preferred solution. Uh, so maybe we're going to, so, to see that in a moment, but just remember that's a single sector node. It, it has a 90 degrees field of view horizontally. Uh, you know, it's uh, ready to grow with uh, channel bonding to deliver this 2.5 gigabit uh, as type services. It's ready to go with uh, an RF2 feature, which we are going to release in about two months uh, to improve the link budget by 6 dB, which everybody knows uh, is important in terms of uh, capacity or distances or availability. And again, in order to make uh, this very simple to deploy, uh, we have not known the node, uh, the mounting kit is included, the metallic bands are included, the grounding cable, the quick start guide are all in the box. Uh, in many cases, uh, if they will be powered from a switch or something which is under the roof, so it's not in the box. But uh, if you need to, you can add a very simple PoE. And we'll talk about these use cases for an extended mounting kit in just uh, this slide. So what we have seen uh, during deployments is that you know when customers were trying to deploy from a large and high roofs, there are a few links which are either not possible or very marginal. You know, if we zoom into this, what we see is that uh, when the N366 is mounted uh, at this, maybe on the center of the roof, then the roof is uh, quite an obstruction. Even if we move the N366, there are still some links which are not possible to deploy. You know, maybe you do four nodes on the four corners. That's not very efficient. And there is still the lack of down tilt capability, which means that uh, these homes, which are just across the street from this high rise, are not easily serviceable. So we really wanted to do something to address uh, this problem. And that is where the 
N265 comes into play. It's, a, as, as we say, the single sector and it's very flexible in terms of uh, uh, up and down the tilt. Uh, we can go up to 60 degrees, as you can see on this slide. So there is a mounting kit which allows plus minus 10 degrees of vertical tilt adjustment. But if we are in a very high rise compared to the homes which have to be connected on the other side of the street, then we have uh, the EHMK SM mounting kit, which is an optional accessory for the N265 and which uh, can uh, basically bring the down tilt all the way down to 60 degrees if it is required. Uh, so that's uh, quite uh, an improvement uh, compared to what we can do today with the N360 and a good complement uh, to the portfolio of nodes uh, that we have in our portfolio. And then there is uh, another application where, for example, in the case of a campus, you know, I happen to want to backhaul a few Wi-Fi IPs or maybe a camera across from the parking lot uh, to the corner. Uh, obviously, 360 degrees with the N366 can do the job, but it's kind of an overkill, and we can use the N265 in that case uh, to just uh, you know, serve the 90 degrees or less that would be required uh, with a very more simple product to deploy than uh, the N360. And just to add to that, Shimon, just from a um, kind of price point of view, the N265 is, is a lower price point, right, than the N366. So you know, if you're looking for a more cost-effective solution, the N265 is, is, is more cost-effective you know, um, than an N366, particularly if you only need, you know, one sector, if you've got 90 degrees um, field of view required, then the N265 is a great use case. And also, Shimon, can you just uh, confirm the number of terminal units you can actually connect to an N265 within that 90 degree beam angle? So, the, yes, a uh, good question. So the, the N265 is exactly like a single sector of the N366. So uh, 15 links per sector, 15 terminal units. Uh, if uh, the N265, just like any single sector, can also daisy chain if you want to another sector. So here in this slide, if I would have uh, the need to connect maybe some something which is on this side of the building and cannot be seen from this corner here, I could put an N265 on this pole here and uh, extend the coverage in that way. I'm, I'm not if, uh, can I maybe do ink? Like, yeah, I can do a pen. So I could mount an N265 on this location, connect this way, so sector to sector, and then start shooting another coverage area of 90 degrees here. Uh, that's just like any single sector of the N366. Same design rules uh, for now. Great. So you can basically connect a node to node uh, in yep. Telegraph. That's something you could not do with uh, our multi hole classic, our, our previous point to multi point products. You, you couldn't do that. So with, with, with Telegraph, you can do that, which is obviously very beneficial and uh, gives you much greater flexibility. Another nice thing to add with the, the, the you know, the CICLU, uh, both nodes as well as so uh, some of the terminal units is the, is the PUE out capability, right? So in this example here, it shows it quite nicely where, you know, we're providing connectivity for, for example, video surveillance cameras uh, or Wi-Fi access points on those lamp lampposts. And, and the, the fact that um, a, a number of the terminal units and also the nodes actually provide PUE out. So we can actually power, for example, a, a PTZ camera right directly from the radio or of course an access point. Uh, so, you know, uh, basically means you don't need to put a hardened switch uh, in many cases at the, uh, at, on the lamppost, uh, you can connect the, uh, the, the camera or the access point directly to the radio. That's correct. Our terminal units uh, can deliver up to 63 watts of PoE out power. So for quite an, a lot, I mean, probably all of the Wi-Fi APs uh, out there it can be powered via this uh, capability and many of the PTZ cameras with 60 watt uh, will work very nicely. Hey Shimon, one question that came in, um, could you go back over when the higher capacity will be available in this N265? 
So the, the high capacity of uh, you know, 2.5 gigabit like services or aggregate 5.5 gigabit is something that we are planning to do for in 2023. So with that, let's you know we are going to talk now about another product that we are launching, which is something very unique in uh, all of the Teragraph ecosystem, uh, because I mentioned earlier that uh, the other the other Teragraph certified solution all required some kind of end-to-end -end controller and uh, deployment. What Ciclu have done without, but we always required at least one uh, command in the GUI to set up a link, and you know, for many users that's okay. Uh, but I think there is still out there a lot of uh, uh, applications where the organization is really not network savvy. They were planning to deploy a wire uh, and then something happens and it's not possible or it's not going to happen in time. And here we basically you know, offer a wire in a box if you want. Or uh, as you saw, the, we offer a, 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 an MPL T260 which is a plug and play link in a box. So uh, you order the MPLT260, you get two units uh, and uh, they are uh, ready to go out of the box and nothing to configure. You just uh, do the installation as we saw it earlier for the T260. It's a very, it's a similar hardware. Uh, so you can install it on the pole, on the wall, uh, plug the data cable with PoE in and that's all. So it's really a, a wire replacement. And nobody needs to go into any kind of GUI CLI uh, for the link to go up, which is completely unheard in the Teragraph ecosystem. Um, even as Alex mentioned it earlier, we tried to make it uh, very simple, uh, but we heard here and there that there are people who, even how simple is not simple enough for them. And you know, we decided to go a step forward and enable a completely plug and play, auto connect, no command, no GUI, no nothing at all for the service to go up and deliver a gigabit capacity in the range of 250 to 300 meters uh, out of the box, nothing to do. Uh, it's, I said, so it's a complete link, as you saw the illustration a moment ago. Uh, you know, if somebody really wants to, you know, after the wire is deployed, they still want to, to do some kind of uh, maybe security enhancement and deploy some VLAN or, or change the default password, you know, just like you have on your home routers. You know, this kind of uh, change, these configurations, uh, you can go into the GUI. It's the same GUI that we have on our multi OTG products in general, and you can uh, configure them any way you want to maybe uh, you know, uh, improve on the service to the end user uh, or change some security aspects, etc. Uh, in terms of power, it's very low. It's 30 watts per side. Again, you know, in the box, you have not just the radios and the mounting kits and the bands, you also have the POE bricks, uh, but because it's solo power, in many cases, uh, the switches which are deployed out there will also be able to power these and keep it even simpler. Uh, so, you know, it's something which is really new. It's you know, one gigabit capacity in the range of 250 meters for the gigabit today. Uh, we are going to enable uh, pretty soon the RF2 feature also on these uh, MPL boxes, uh, and that will extend the range of the gigabit by an additional 100 meters. So now we'll have uh, somewhere around 350 meters. Uh, so it's difficult for me to, I guess, just multiply by three to get it in feet. Alex, if you can help me there. Sure, it's about, <laughs> no worries, Shimon. It's, you talk about 750 feet-ish. Uh, from a distance point of view for a for gig. Uh, if you want to go, to go a little bit longer, like 300 meters, about 900 feet, and, you know, uh, it might give you a little bit uh, lower bandwidth, you know, if it's like a rain event or something like that. But it gives you that kind of distance currently. But as, as Shimo mentioned, once uh, we uh, enable RF2, which we'll talk about a little bit later as well from a software uh, upgrade point of view, this is going to be a firmware upgrade only, not a hardware upgrade. That's going to give you additional 6 dB and it's going to give you I don't know, Shimon, what, 20%, 30% additional uh, distance, roughly? Yes, for the for, actually, for the gigabit, it's going to give even more because we probably should expect, like, if we're talking about nominally 250 meter, we'll go 350 meter uh, with the gigabit. So it's uh, more than 20, yeah, 20% 20 still. 
That's right. good. Yeah. In, in the, and uh, one other thing to point out as well, the 13 watts, we, we, we use regular standard PUE. Uh, so it's, you know, regular AF PUE. So some other, you know, manufacturers there don't use standard PUE. So you got to, you have to use their PUE injectors, you know, uh, in, in our case, you don't, even though the, the radios come with PUE injectors in the box included. You know, if if you've got uh, some you know existing switches, you want to connect it power straight from a switch, you can do that. You don't have to use the the PUE injectors that that it comes with. So that's also very very useful, I think, as well. Will you yes. will there be an SFP plus version of the MPL two hundred and sixty in the future? Uh, there will be, but it's going to it's not this year. So, okay, if, so, uh, so more like 2023 we're looking at? Yeah, yeah. 2023, that's, you know, we have plans to add more products, uh, you know, including a high-end version with an SFP Plus if you want, and higher capacities because uh, this MPLT 260 is you know, tops at one gigabit just because of the nature of the physical port uh, on the unit. And that's one of the reasons why we want to have uh, also the SFP Plus version of it uh, for higher end services or for just real fiber extension, if that would be the case. And it would come in a multi port version also with POE in, POE out, and a fiber port. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to skip this slide, uh, maybe and come back later if we need to, but you know, in terms of uh, you know, what's the simplest uh, you know, way to explain when to use the T260, think about uh, an organization which is already deployed uh, somewhere in these, uh, you know, these buildings around here, and they need to expand, and the nearest building available is uh, across from the parking lot, so we need to run wires, which we know sometimes is Time consuming, certainly costs some money. Just throw the MPLT 260 here between the two buildings and you get your gigabit extension uh, right there. You know, literally minutes. Uh, for those who are familiar with millimeter wave, all you need is line of sight, which here across the parking lot is pretty easy. But you know, the, the most important thing to remember is that it's virtually interference free. Spectrum uh, is not uh, licensed, so you, know, you don't need to check with regulators, etc. In many countries, at least in the US, definitely license exempt. Uh, so as long as long as you have line of sight, uh, you know, just go on the roof, uh, and then the the two boxes will self-align, even if uh, the buildings are not exactly facing each other. Uh, they will self-align uh, their antennas, and uh, they will maintain the link uh, day in day out. And just to add as well with this, you can do a single point-to-point -point link like this, which is really easy and a, and a great solution, particularly in areas where there's a lot of uh, RF interference, RF noise, you know, like in the five gigahertz spectrum, uh, 60 gigahertz is, as Shimo mentioned, is, you know, interference free. You don't have to worry about any kind of interference, whatever, of course, license free as well. Uh, but also you could do this in a uh, in a daisy chain configuration. So, you know, if you have multiple you know, buildings or, you know, lampposts or whatever, and you want to connect multiple buildings together, you can literally go point to point to point to point to point. You know, uh, you can do that way as well, right, Shimon? Also, you need a switch kind of in between to connect the radios together. Um, but, you know, you can definitely extend it as well if, if necessary. Yes, that's another option. I think by, by the time you add the switch, you factor the cost of the switch and the box uh, for the switch uh, on, on the pole, uh, you're probably better off with the N366 itself. Uh, in that case, you know, when you want to do a, a drop and insert, uh, but there, there may be some cases where the, you know, it's so simple to do a drop and insert, but uh, the, the switch is still a, a valid solution. So, different options for different uh, use cases. Great, yeah, thanks, Jamal. Um, and actually, we are coming up on our poll number two. Katie, if you can help us here. Yep. So, the second poll is, um, it's just if you've deployed any Terragraph solution in the past. Um, 
And so I just opened it, so we'll leave it open for maybe 15 more seconds. Right, so, um, all right, just so, so it's actually Alex and Shimon, it's it's pretty much flipped from the earlier poll. So about 70% have not deployed any tier graph solution. So I think this is, this is a good, hopefully you guys are learning a lot on this webinar and um, maybe we can talk about the, the Ciclu tier graph starter kit at the end um, that you guys are offering to get people to, te to test some tear graph. For sure, absolutely. Yeah, definitely some of the people interested in uh, trying out this deployment. I uh, would love to talk to you and work with you on that. Okay, thank you very much, Katie, for, for this. Uh, so, you know, we spoke about some of uh, what we've done already with our multi OLTG series. Uh, there's still uh, lots of work uh, going on in terms of software, in terms of products. Uh, so you know, through the remainder of the year, we are going to add this uh, RF2 capability, which is uh, going to improve uh, the link budget either for distance or capacity or availability. It's the same rule of three, uh, as long as you do wireless, uh, distance, capacity, availability, and uh, you optimize uh, the deployment for what is more important for the organization. Uh, but certainly the fact that uh, we have a software feature basically which is going to be enabled on uh, on our product and uh, add 20 percent more distance uh, don't say if you want you know, it's a 6 db capability uh, improvement on the link budget virtually at no cost for the organization uh, that's quite a nice add uh, for everybody out there which uh, is working with uh, the multi ltg series uh, we will also add uh, an SNMP uh, uh, client, uh, sorry, an SNMP server, uh, which will allow third-party EMSs to monitor the multi OLTG series. So we know that some organizations uh, you know, have some uh, uh, homegrown uh, EMS solution, which they want to continue and expand and use with the multi OLTG. So that's where the SNMP uh, server is going to help. Uh, we have had a NetConf uh, server in uh, multi OLTG from day one, uh, which some have already taken advantages of, uh, but where uh, it's you know, the, the tool is not very flexible and does not allow addition of uh, the NetConf, uh, then uh, that is where SNMP will help. And I think the most important thing that we are going to be doing this year in terms of uh, software features uh, is the Mesh 2.0, uh, where we bring uh, resiliency uh, at you know, very fast uh, response time, uh, literally 15 milliseconds or better. Uh, independent of uh, the controller, we are going to show that in the next slide, literally. And then going into 2023, we'll be doing some more work, uh, adding features like uh, channel bonding for these uh, services in the 2.5 gigabit speeds, uh, enabling jumbo frame, which is important sometimes for people doing MPLS type uh, infrastructure, or doing a slit servi a service line uh, identification, uh, you know, DHCP option 82 technically, but you know, everybody likes to call this uh, slid. Uh, it's important for service providers who want to automate a little bit uh, the way they do a service authentication and they use DHCP option 82 like it's been done on DSL and on GPON and other technologies. Uh, so we want to do this to uh, allow this type of service providers to take advantage of our multi OLTG series as well and uh, radius and TACAX to automate uh, uh, the technician's authentication with our boxes as well uh, as opposed to do it manually like uh, we do it today. In terms of uh, product, uh, we are going to bring the N367 uh, this year, uh, I would say two months-ish uh, out, you know, out of the door. That's when we will announce it. We'll provide more technical details in terms of uh, RF performance and size and weight and power, etc. Uh, but it will also be RF2 enabled out of the box. 
uh, and uh, that is where you know, we'll be able to take full advantage of this feature uh, from the node to the terminal unit. And going into 2023, some additional uh, models of nodes and TUs, for example, to enable the SFP Plus on the, the MPL series. Uh, you know, today we have one Ethernet port or two Ethernet ports if you, know, you don't want to do it with copper. So we want to go three Ethernet ports with two PoE out, uh, like uh, we have uh, today on many of our other products. And we even want to go uh, GPS less uh, operations. Uh, today, all the Teragraph certified solutions uh, need a visibility of uh, GPSs. Uh, you know, and sometimes it's a little bit challenging if we need to deploy very close to the wall if we want to go indoor. And these kind of use cases are not uh, are challenging or not possible with the existing Teragraph certified solutions. And uh, we think uh, we can do better. If we get rid of the GPS, uh, we have a solution to do this, which we will add in some of our products uh, next year, 2023. Uh, so I told you I would speak a little more about uh, Mesh 2.0. So Mesh 2.0 is a complete solution from uh, design to installation. Uh, we, heard, we spoke about uh, Windy a moment ago, our network design tool. Uh, which, uh, in addition to the way to the fact that it can design the network, it can export today bill of material, uh, so that you, know, you can check with your distributor if they have it available, or you can check with your warehouse if uh, you have the equipment already available in your warehouse. Uh, it can uh, do the configuration file per a network element, but then you have to take this configuration and literally dump it on per network element basis uh, manually uh, and what we will add to windy is the ability to do a network configuration file so for a complete service area in one file in that case and plug this network file into the nms where the render subsystem uh, will look basically at this uh, network configuration file and will start monitoring the network and every time it will uh, realize that uh, one new element has been, uh, you know, re you know, has raised the link uh, in the network. It will connect to this network element and will do all the configuration that is required, you know, IP address and management VLANs and create all the additional uh, links that this node or terminal unit should be able to serve from there. So it's complete automation and no need to go box by box you know the technician in the field does not need to do anything at all except do the mechanical and you know, power installation for that location uh, and, and all they need to do is report the serial number that's one way to do it. there is there are other options but if you know, if the direction is that the technician in the field should literally not go into the GUI of the unit and not do any configuration at all that is where the nms and its other subsystem come in and they do the complete automation uh, for the network deployment and nothing to do at installation time. Um, so that's the way uh, we, you know, all this mesh to the solution will operate. In addition to that, it will also configure all of the resiliency rules in the network. And we are going to show in the slide what this all means. But the good thing is once this has been configured and that happens, uh, when the network is coming up, uh, basically you can literally take the NMS down and resiliency will happen by itself. So here is a, a typical uh, you know, network with you know, fiber coming into uh, one of the nodes. Uh, the nodes are deployed and configured uh, as you know, the NMS realizes that they are all available, whether they are nodes or TUs, they are all uh, connected and configured properly. Uh, and what is most important, every node in the network is configured with a minimum of uh, two tunnels. And the tunnel is there to back all the traffic of all the TUs served by this node, as well as maybe there's a service, you know, if the node is sitting on top of a home or uh, a building and is also maybe dropping a gig or uh, to that location. We see all the services from that node are uh, tunneled by the node uh, all the way to the pop transparently 
at layer two speeds, uh, and you know, then the tunnel is is removed so that it's transparent to the rest of your network, uh, and you basically see you know if you have set up you know a single VLAN or a CNNS, that's what you see on the traffic coming into your core network. You don't see anything about the tunnel, even the the tunnel itself is a, a, something which looks like a VLAN if you could look at it uh, with uh, a sniffer. Uh, so we have a, an active tunnel, we have a backup tunnel, maybe more than one if uh, you know, the topology will allow. Uh, these tunnels are monitored for continuity all the time, and if, uh, the, uh, there is a problem with these tunnels, it would be reported uh, to uh, the NMS. Uh, but even if the NMS no, is not there and does not notice that something happens, uh, you know, let's uh, have a look at uh, what happens if one of the nodes uh, would drop from uh, the topology, and now you know, this node has to uh, react to the problem. So the node has dropped. Uh, this node has noticed that uh, the tunnel here was interrupted and has automatically switched the traffic uh, to this alternative uh, tunnel so that uh, you know, basically the traffic is restored in the 50 millisecond like response time. Runner was not involved at all uh, during this time. That even if, as I said, you literally power down the NMS, the network keeps running, keeps forwarding traffic, and will switch over on their own. I know at some point in time, it's better to have the NMS and runner still available. They will realize that something has happened, and they will try to configure additional uh, tunnels, if possible, so that if there will be another event in the network, uh, the network will be ready to react again to the problems that may arise. And uh, so, as I said, as I showed in the previous slide, you know, all this is uh, contingent on the design coming out of Windy, being prepared offline, runner having this design, uh, and being able to configure the network. As we move forward and we realize that our uh, planning engine is uh, actually doing what it should be doing, we'll move the planning engine from the offline to the online, uh, so that we, basically the uh, windy, if you want, uh, will be part of the runner, uh, and we'll be able to take advantage of line of sight, not which are thought to be available, uh, you know, when windy was doing the design, but which are actually reported by uh, the network elements. Uh, so if uh, you know, a link is uh, maybe known to maybe exist, but uh, when the installers have done the work, actually a tree has grown up and line of sight is not available, uh, then when this uh, online windy, if you want, we'll be able to do an alternate design and make sure that all the network is connected in some way or shape uh, per the KPIs of the organization. And we'll Shimon, be able to... Shimon, I'm going to uh, I'm going to jump in there one second because I know we're we're up, up against the time crunch. Uh, just two things to quickly add on here. You, you mentioned about Windy. That's kind of one of the key things I think of of Ciclu just as a as a company, but also uh, of Teragraph is that we have this you know Windy design tool which you mentioned, which you know we we uh, allow our, our partners to have access to, so we can actually provide you know you and your organization access to this and provide training on how how it works. But also we we also offer a design service, so we do, I mean, hundreds hundreds uh, of designs for our partners. So if you have a neighborhood you want to design with Teragraph, reach out to your your you know sales contact at Ciclu, uh, work with them, and we will be gladly work with the organization putting a, a design together which is very very key you know uh, so kind of take uh, take a lot of that work off you uh, and there's a big question i think people are wondering when is this going to be available when is mesh 2.0 going to be available from cyclo because i know lots lots of uh, people are waiting for this so can i want to give people just a, a kind of rough estimate when we're looking to uh, to launch this shima so we plan to uh, to do the windy part in Q3, so that people who are going to want to plan for this kind of networks will be able to continue and do this more advanced planning with the resiliency in mind. And in Q4, we will do the additions uh, on the uh, TG software itself, so that the embedded software on the nodes and terminal units will be able to do the mesh to the two types of resiliency. Uh, and I should have added that uh, the NMS and the runner will also be added in the third quarter so that people will be able to start monitoring their TG networks and get used to the fact that uh, the runner subsystem is there to automate the network bring up for them. 
and in Q4, uh, Rona will be a little more capable and do these resiliency configurations as well, so that it's going to be this whole uh, chain that we see here, uh, from the Windy to the NMS runner to the devices playing all together, a complete end-to-end, -end, uh, you know, hands-off uh, solution. Great, thanks. Thanks, Shamal. Okay, and then, you know, uh, as you mentioned earlier, Alex, we are not uh, just a multi OTG, we are also a, a, a very serious uh, IBAN, maybe the, the leader of the IBAN, the, at least, you know, in the, as reported by the FCC uh, in, uh, you know, as of a few months ago. Uh, so we continue to extend our IBAN solutions. You know, today we have the 8010 for the 10 gigabit, but we will add uh, some additional capabilities. Uh, before the end of the year to go all the way to 20 gigabit uh, in a way which is a little bit unique because uh, we also want to do this uh, flex SRE which is a, a, a very special way to future-proof the switching and the routing engine in uh, the 10 and 20 gigabit product uh, so that even though it will come as a very capable enterprise grade or carrier grade types uh, integrated switch with multiple ports of 10 gigabit and 25 gigabit, sorry, in the product, we know that uh, these requirements uh, you know, continue to evolve. Carrier Ethernet is not done, uh, Enterprise Ethernet is not done, and you know, we'll be able to add uh, more capabilities in our product uh, as we go. So we will launch it this year you know, with uh, the, uh, the, the best of uh, what uh, Carrier Ethernet or Enterprise Ethernet should be in 2022, uh, but based on this Flex SRE, we will continue to uh, add additional features in 2023 and for a few more years to make uh, this uh, a very relevant product at 10 and 20 gigabit for anybody who wants to do you know, very, you know, very special uh, things like uh, extend your topologies from point to point to drop an insert or to ring or do extended uh, extend the MEM type of services and bonding uh, our 10 and 20 gigabit links with additional uh, microwave equipment, for example, uh, to guarantee 20 kilometer or 30 kilometer reach for this type of uh, capacities a and operate all this, again, as you mentioned, Alex, uh, simplicity is something that uh, we hold dear at Ciclu. Uh, so operating this kind of 20 gigabit solution with all of the features, and a single pane of glass uh, on the GUI of uh, the product, or very well integrated with our EMS and NMS solution as well. Great, but thanks, Shimon. So watch watch this space, basically. So more news coming on this right later later this year, I, I would say. Yes, yes. Um, and I know that if we would follow the agenda, Alex, we would know it we would now switch over to you and you could tell us, uh, you know, what has your team been able to do with uh, with our partners in terms of rolling out a uh, multi-OLTG in a few places, but I realize that we're also a few minutes. So, Katie, what do you think? I mean, do we do this, uh, uh, you know, application part, or do we open for the Q&A if you have a, a long list already of questions? Yeah, I think we're, we're kind of bumping up at the hour. So I think we'll just open it up to Q&A. And then if there's any further questions from anyone on, um, on the webinar today on, you know, where um, where's the best places to, to deploy Terragraph solution, um, you know, get in contact with Ciclu or with your sales rep at Double Radius. Um, and we can engage Ciclu to talk about the different, um, you know, use cases and applications for Terragraph, if that's okay with you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it's your kind of no, you decide. So, with that, I'm going to switch to the Q and A. So, one question that just came in about um, Wendy, can Alex or Shimon, can you go back through where um, where can customers find the Wendy tool um, to be able to to um, be able to do a design in? Can you go through it on the Ciclu, um website where they would find that? Sure. So, simplest way is to go to the Ciclu website and look for Smart Hall. Uh, and from there, you, there will be all of the tools which we have available are described very briefly. And there is a link to Windy. If somebody is quick, uh, you can go directly to Windy. It's w-i-n-d-e.ciclu.com. And you can reg 
register there if your organization is approved, or if not, uh, there is a, a place where you can ask for a username and password, and we'll open that for you. And it's free to all partners, just to add that as well. There's, there's no cost, so it's, it's a free uh, tool that we, we made available. Awesome. And I just sent it all um, in the chat window, the URL to Wendy. So if you um, if you were able to see that in the chat window, you'll be able to get the link. Um, another question, um, if anyone's interested in the Ciclu Terragraph Starter Kit, um, where can they fill out the form to get approved for that? And what's uh, the they, that? Yeah, so, so they, they can go to their, uh, uh, you know, Ciclu distributor. So also in this case, you know, double radius. Um, they can, you know, talk to your, your account manager or, or you know, just uh, 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 your point of contact at, at, at double radius and they can help you out with that. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, the, 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 there are just a couple of very simple rules. Um, it's only available for customers who have not used Terragraph before, so you're going to be a new Terragraph user. So you've not the deployed it previously. The multi user, Alex. Uh, multi hole TG, correct, thank you. Um, and, and also, it's just one uh, kit available per, per customer. And basically, in the kit, you get one of each uh, uh, product. And we, we, we haven't included the, the new Telegraph radius that we just presented today. So you get an N366, uh, no plus uh, one of each of the three um, different terminal units that we have available. Yeah. And so if you're, if you're looking to demo the, the units, that's, it's, that kit's a really good, um, good way to be able to demo everything that's currently available and shipping today. Yeah, and just to remind it, uh, the the promo expires at the end of June, so you have like uh, about a week left to to place your order. I know Double Radius, you guys have stock of, of SQL Telegraph, so uh, uh, they can ship uh, pretty much immediately. Yeah, we do. Um, what about um, do you need line of sight to be able to deploy any of the SQL solutions? Uh, yeah, so uh, do we get on Shimon? So millimeter wave. I mean, th this goes for for all millimeter waves, not just Ciclu. Millimeter waves, the technology uh, does require clear line of sight. So you can't have any buildings in the way, trees or anything like that. Now, the nice thing is the line of sight can be quite narrow. You don't need like a super wide field of view. It can be literally between buildings, or you know. Uh, it can be extremely narrow. So, you know, when we're doing a design, um, you know, we, we also look at line of sight uh, as much as possible without being on site. But, you know, sometimes you can go below the tree line or above the tree line or kind of around trees, but you, you do require line of sight, yes. But but the nice thing about multi OLTG, whether you choose an N366 or the N265, is that these allow you to go around line of sight limitations, as I was showing. Uh, you know, on the slide earlier, that uh, you basically install a, a repeater if you want to go around the line of sight. But with multi OLTG, these repeaters are just a single node, N366 or 265, depending on the, the angle of the repeat that you need to do. Okay, great. Thanks, Shimon and Alex. Uh, I, I see there's a question on the when will the N265 be shipping. Uh, so we, we're starting to ship those in the next uh, few weeks to distribution. Obviously, by the time they, they receive them, you know, they're coming from Israel. Uh, so, yeah, they're pro they'll probably be available to ship to customers, I'd say, from mid, mid to end of July. And that, that goes for the N265, the MPL260, the, you know, the point-to-point the -point gig in a box link uh, is probably going to be just a little bit later. I'd, I'd say that'll be available uh, probably early August. We'd be shipping those out to distribution uh, next month, July. So that'll be, that should be available early August. Okay. That's great. All right. Any other, I don't see any other questions. Anything else you wanted to address Alex or Shimon? I know one thing we get asked about quite a bit is availability. Generally, of products, obviously, in today's day and age, in you know, a supply chain crisis, lead times, et cetera, et cetera, um, you know, obviously, we've been impacted as everyone else has been. But uh, on the whole, we've actually we fared extremely well, and, and our partners like Double Radius have been very, very good in uh, forward planning, so keeping good stock levels. So uh, most of our products, uh, Double Radius, have in stock, which is awesome, including our 8010 radios, 10 gig radios. So, uh, the whole range of telegraph radios as well as our other products as well um so uh 
you know, obviously depends on the products of our um, uh, legacy. All the products are longer lead times if they're coming from the factory, but um, like double radius have most of our products on the shelf, which is really good news. Yeah, we have a lot of the the, the Terragraph and the Evan both in, in Utah and in our Charlotte, North Carolina warehouse. So you can pretty much, um, you know, reach out to your sales rep or your sick glue rep if you're looking for something in particular, we can, we can find it for you all. Um, what, oh, oh, sorry, one other question just came in, Alex. Um, what's the mass, max distance for the meshing capabilities of the N366? Uh, I'll, I'll let Shimon, you want to get that one? You can give a more product management uh, answer on that one than the sales answer. <laughs> so, uh, you know, to, the distance is uh, in 60 gigahertz. I think the dominant factor is the di simplest distance. Uh, weather has very little to do. Certainly not, uh, not snow, not uh, fog. Uh, rain has a little Im impact, but it's uh, since the links are not very long, it doesn't have a major impact. Uh, the best thing to do if you are not, you know, the distance is generally between 250 to 300 meter with uh, the existing software, and will go a little longer uh, when we roll out the RF2 feature in about two months. Uh, the best way to understand what's going on with distances and the multi OTG equipment is uh, to go into our link budget calculator tool uh, which is available online uh, again to everybody you just need to register it's on lbc.cyclo.com and then you have a, a, a series of canned uh, configuration if you want like uh, n366 to t280 n366 to t265 all different possible combinations or n366 to n366 and you choose the type of link that you want to check, whether it's in the backbone, so like 366 to 366, or service with a simple terminal unit or with a dish-based terminal unit, and you can check your distances there, depending on which region you are, the kind, you know, whether you want just one gigabit or maybe even less than a gig. If it's just to back all the camera, you probably don't need more than 100 meg, uh, which is basically any multi OTG link will do if you want a gig you need to pay a little more attention. Uh, and again, the you know, best is to go and check online at lbc.cyclo.com. But you know, if you, the, real, the rule of thumb is 250 meters. Great, thanks so much, Shimon. Well, I think we're at the top of the hour, so I think we're gonna wrap up. We will um, post this recording. We'll send it out to every, all the attendees and signups. Um, so you will be able to have the um, the recording in your email and then we also will post the recording um, on our double radius youtube channel um, so you can watch it whenever um, is convenient for you thank you shimon and alex um, and the siklu team for us the siklu team for joining the call today and putting on this presentation for us if there's any other additional questions just reach out to your siklu rep or you can reach out to your double radius rep um, or sales at double radius.com and we will be happy to answer your questions um, and get all everything answered for you. Thank you again for joining. Thanks, Alex and Shimon, for joining the call today. Thank you, Katie. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. All right. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.